And uh, my second question is about climate change. Um, your colleague, Governing Council member uh, Jens Weidmann, said in a speech recently that uh, there is no mandate for an active role uh, of the ECB in the fight against climate change. He said uh, an active role in climate change policy uh, could undermine our independence and ultimately jeopardize our ability to maintain price stability. Would you uh, agree with his view? Thank you. I agree with many views of Jens uh, Weidmann, the, um, the governor of the, of the Bundesbank. Um, on, on this issue of climate, I know it's very tempting to oppose my views and the views of, um, of my colleague and friend uh, Jens Weidmann. There are lots of things that we agree upon, and I think that he's equally concerned as I am uh, about the impact of climate change on our economies. I think that those issues will actually um, come to a head when we have uh, the debate about climate change, which is an entire chapter of our strategy review. Because, and this is a view that I hold very firmly. Um, while it is not here a question of substituting government, it is not a question of turning ourselves into a fiscal agent or into a regulatory authorities in the, in the um, universe of climate change uh, measures. And I think on that point, I would completely agree with my, my colleague and friend, Jens. Uh, equally, I believe that in uh, everything that we do, we have to be mindful of climate change impact in terms of risk and in terms of um, delivering on our mandate, which is price stability. And one of the debates that we will have as part of our strategy review is whether or not the direct and indirect impact of climate change have a bearing on our primary mandate of price stability. I happen to think that it does. Now, there might be different views, but I think we should debate those views, and we will do so as an institution. Uh, equally, I believe that we have to look at uh, our various portfolios, our own portfolios, our pension uh, uh, portfolio, as well as our monetary policy portfolio, to make sure that we assess risks properly. And in that respect, uh, I'm very happy that uh, the European Parliament has moved forward with taxonomy, that the Commission has now developed the soft law that is associated with that taxonomy and will continue to develop even more work in order to make sure that we have the whole range from the very, very green to the not so green at the other end so that we can have a proper understanding of our risk position, as will be important the obligation to disclose and explain uh, that will hopefully be applying to banks uh, in short order uh, which will require that they themselves conduct the due diligence in order to make sure that they properly assess the risk of their counterparty. So uh, let me also mention that uh, we are trying to make progress step by step, and uh, in so doing, uh, we have uh, enlarged now uh, our, our bond uh, purchasable universe by now accepting as of January 1st uh, green bonds that are associated with a variable coupon uh, that are uh, a factor of ESG criteria. This used not to be possible because coupon had to be fixed. We have now slightly varied that to accept and enlarge uh, the green bond universe from which we can buy and of which we are a significant purchaser for that matter. So on climate change, uh, trust me, we're going to continue that discussion. And, uh, and uh, it's, as I said, it's not a question of substituting for other authorities who have to do the job. It's not for us to regulate. Uh, it's not for us to produce taxonomy. Others have, are doing this job and will continue to do it. But we have to bear in mind those risks and the direct and indirect impacts that it has on the natural interest rate, that it has on the price stability objectives and the impact on inflation of, for instance, uh, major uh, weather uh, circumstances, or drought, or uh, uh, carbon tax, uh, if and when it comes, and so on and so forth. So we have great debates ahead, and, and they, will, uh, they will come.